Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Zen from Zen World, and if you're enjoying my content, drop a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Today's video is going to focus on the pilot episode of Stargirl. The entirety of this video will cover four subpoints regarding the episode itself. Number one, premiere, direction, and actors. Number two, episode rundown. Number three, my overall thoughts. And four, the Easter eggs that I found in the episode. Stargirl aired on May 18, 2020. The show is directed by Glenn Winter and written by Jeff Johns. And the creator of Courtney Whitmore is Lee Motter. And the story editor by Taylor Stites. Stargirl is comprised of an amazing cast with Breck Bassinger, Yvette Monreal, Luke Wilson, and Angelica Washington. But there's a lot more. The, the introduction of the show gives us the perspective of Pat Dugan, also known as Stripesy. Stripesy used to be the sidekick of the superhero known as Starman. During a communication, Starman tells Pat to stay away and to not come to the headquarters where he and the rest of the Justice Society are located. During this time, the Justice Society of America is battling the Injustice Society in an epic battle of good versus evil. Pat doesn't listen and attempts to come to the aid of Starman and the rest of the, the Justice Society. Upon his arrival, he's bombarded with the chaos of the fight. He first comes across Wildcat, who is heavily injured. Pat runs into the mansion where he sees Our Man and others fighting the likes of the Wizard, Sportsmaster, and Tigress. When all hope seems lost, Starman enters the fray from another fight to battle against Brainwave, a member of the Injustice Society. The battle is intense, but Starman overcomes Brainwave with his cosmic staff. In the blink of an eye, Starman is pierced by a flying icicle by a villain called Icicle. Pat is able to get Starman into the car and drive away from the headquarters where the fight took place. Icicle gives the order to Solomon Grundy to go get them. Grundy runs after them in a menacing way until Pat activates the flight system. The activation initiates a flight sequence. Upon flying off, Grundy then strikes the rear end of the car's propulsion. This eventually sends them to crash into a nearby forest. They do escape Grundy and the rest of the Injustice Society, which is pretty good. Pat then gets out and checks on Starman. He explains to him that he needs to go see a doctor, but Starman says, Pat is too late. Before his last breath, Starman tells him that the, In the Justice Society has fallen, but the legacy must continue. And this includes the mantle of Starman and the powerful cosmic staff. Starman does explain to Pat that he's not the one in a semi comedical fashion, but he is trusted to find the next one and to protect the staff. During this scene, we're introduced to a young Courtney Whitmore who's waiting for her dad on Christmas Eve. Unfortunately, her father never comes and her mother must go to work. Courtney says that she wants to see her dad, but unfortunately, her mother tells her she has to go. And you know that she should try her best to have a great night with the people that she's staying with. We then receive a healthy 10 year time skip and are introduced to a teenage Courtney, her mother and her stepbrother. Courtney is not happy that she has to move and blames her stepfather. Guess who her stepfather is? No, guess. It's Pat. Coincidence? Mm, I think not. More like the star the stars are aligning. Pat tries his hardest uh, to get to know Courtney, but she has a hard time letting him in. On a psychological level, Courtney still remembers her father and doesn't want a replacement. Makes, makes sense from a teenager who longs to see her dad. When they move to Blue Valley, Courtney has a hard day at school and defends the well-being of a girl from the jocks who call her a slut. This scene is super important and the reason being is, as a watcher, this lets you know that Courtney does not hesitate to help others and is led by integrity first. Later that Friday night, her stepfather, well not her stepfather, her stepbrother speaks about his amazing day that he had and Courtney pretty much has little bit to say. Her mother asks her what she's going to do for the night. Courtney says she basically has no plans. Pat suggests going out. Courtney says, you're not, don't think that you're my dad. And she walks away. Courtney goes into the basement in frustration and comes across some of Pat's boxes. Earlier in a couple of scenes, uh, in a couple of earlier scenes, we see that the movers were moving the boxes in an unconventional way to Pat's liking. 
the expression led Courtney to think that maybe something is going on, which then makes this, this whole entire scene make sense. Upon kicking the box, she found a picture of what looks like Pat holding a trout. Moving the glass to the side, she sees another picture behind that picture with Pat with the, the trouts. And this one is, is a picture of the Justice Society. Courtney is surprised and kept looking to find out that Pat is actually stripesy when she looked at a newspaper. A long box started to illuminate to, her, to the side. Courtney reluctantly took the took out the cosmic staff. The staff then activated and gave mobile movement, letting us as the viewer know that the staff does have some kind of sentience. She held the staff, who then took her across Booth Valley. They eventually landed in a drive through movie area where she saw the jocks from earlier in school bothering some other people. So Courtney makes a makeshift, a makeshift mask, puts it on, and then she goes over to their cart and punctures the tire with the staff. Eventually she's found and then the staff activates as she's trying to get away and then she ends up blasting their car unintentionally. Upon running off, she is eventually she eventually makes it home. But guess who's waiting for her? Pat. After they go back and forth about who, the why, and the dangers, they come to somewhat of an understanding. But then Courtney goes upstairs and she asks her dad, she asks her mother, is her dad a hero? Uh, Courtney surmised that her dad was Starman, but Pat said earlier that they had two different names and the possibility is too coincidental. Her mother, her mother explains that her father was never there, never there, and Pat was the only man who was consistently present in their life. Understanding this logic, Courtney does not question her mother any further. During the scene, the viewers can see an uh, understanding emerge from Courtney that Pat is not such a bad guy and should be given a chance. Later on, on the porch, Courtney agrees to give Pat a chance to keep her to keep his secret as long as Pat doesn't get in her way. <laughs> Cut into another scene, the jock, the jock explains to his father what had happened to the car. His father asks him to re-explain the whole staff portion part. After telling him, the father then says to his son, I'll, we'll talk about this in the morning. We are then reintroduced to Brainwave, who is the father of that jock. He then uses telekinesis after his son is gone to use a, a key to open up a door that opens up a hidden space within the, the bookcase with his old suit and pictures and other elements that I probably have to go back and investigate a little bit further. As Courtney is trying to sleep, the cosmic staff goes into her room to communicate with her. Her mother hears something and then heads up to the room. Courtney then shoves the staff under her bed and attempts to act neutral. Though very quick, Courtney lets her mom know that she's willing to give Pat a chance and, you know, she's sorry about earlier. Her mother is super happy with this and Courtney then says, okay, good night. <laughs> Trying to brush her mother off. After her mother leaves, she gets back up to check on the staff and the staff is actually already up and waiting for her. As she grabs the staff, it whisks her away to a top, a top building structure. Apparently, we as the viewer and Courtney are given the understanding that the staff wants to train. We then are given a scene where, you know, it's kind of like a training, a training scene where she's doing a lot of her gymnastics uh, abilities in combination with the staff itself, which is pretty cool. We're not too sure how long the scene goes for, but then we get a scene where the staff then brings her to a nearby location. A tire facility and while she's there she's kind of walking around and then she gets knocked over and eventually she gets brought into a building into the tire facility building where then she's calling for help until we are let known that brainwave is the one who's there and who's attacking her brainwave then he uses his telekinesis to bring her to him and eventually courtney then activates the staff to attack brainwave during this time he asks her questions such as who are you why did you attack my son uh by this time courtney then runs out and she then sees a robot who just menacingly um walks to her and you know at this point i'm thinking that it's pretty much a villain because you know there's brainwave there and there's this some sort of a robot 
But then we hear, I told you not to touch the staff. And at this moment, in an exciting fashion, we, we get to know that it's Pat who's, who's commanding this, <laughs> this big robot-like figure. And at that point, the scene ends. All right, so you guys are probably wondering, like, all right, Zen, you just told us the whole story of that that episode, and it sounds pretty epic. What are your thoughts on the episode? Well, for me, the episode was pretty stellar. I The effects were amazing for a superhero TV show, and the acting wasn't underwhelming, and it wasn't over the top. If I had to critique one thing within the episode, I would definitely say the CG for Solomon Grundy, Solomon Grundy and the mobile carrier utilized by Pat. Were they bad? Absolutely not. Were they great? Nope. Were they good? They were they were they were they were pretty good. But I had to critique something in the episode. Okay, I, I can't make it seem like the episode is perfect. I did have to write a script for this for this video. So honestly, I am looking forward to future episodes. So you're probably wondering, okay, you did talk about Easter eggs earlier. What were the top five Easter eggs that I found in the episode? The first one is the Golden Age. If you saw the title card within the episode, it refers to the earliest introductions of superheroes in the DC landscape. Number two, Green Flames and Blast. This can be understood as the Blast from Alan Scott. This is when the Injustice Society was going against the Justice Society of America. So you're probably saying, who is Alan Scott? He's a Golden Age Green Lantern. His abilities and story are very different from the, the Green Lantern corpse. But let me know if you want a video about him, and in the future I'll drop one. Number three, Jay Garrick's helmet. In the last scenes between the fight with the JSA and the Injustice League, you can see the helmet of Jay Garrick. Wait, are you thinking, who is Jay Garrick? He again is a Golden Age um, superhero. He's the Golden Age Flash. So I'm not going to explain his rundown and story, but if you want me to do a video, again, just like Alan Scott, drop it in the comment section. Number four, American Action Movers. The style that was written on the moving van already lets you know that this is a reference and nod to Action Comics, where the all-great Superman was introduced. Number five, Blue Valley. In, in the DCU history, Blue Valley is the original home of Wally West, who many know as Kid Flash, or depending on when you were introduced to the Flash, know him as the Flash. So those are the Easter eggs, and I'm pretty sure that there are more Easter eggs, but I'll let you all investigate the rest and add it in the comment section below when you watch the episode. So if you enjoyed this episode about the pilot episode for Stargirl, let me know in the comment section, drop a like, comment, about the Easter eggs and just your thoughts on the episode and where you think it's going to go. And I'll catch you all later for the next video. Take care, everyone.